We arrived last night after the two and a half hour drive from the Algarve. Isabella and I headed straight out for the beach to Gincho Beach Bar, checked in at the hotel and popped out for dinner to Hüffen. This is a trendy restaurant offering expensive versions of traditional Portuguese classic dishes. It was good. Good morning. This is the only way to start the day. All right, enough of that. Let's uh, head out to the Paradão. Cascais is a pretty well-known city in the expat arena and has a very Portuguese feel to it, having been a getaway for the Portuguese royal family since the 1870s. As a result, it has grown into a municipality of 200,000 people and is an important tourist destination. Cascais has hosted notable events like the America's Cup, WSL surf events, Formula One at Estoril's racetrack years ago, and many, many other events of an international caliber. There is always something happening in Cascais, and it's a vibrant community. Today, we'll be thinking of the question, is it worth it to live here? We're going to head around Cascais and chat with a few people and do some fun things to try and get a small taste of life in Cascais in January, which is the middle of winter. Hey, yes, good hey, morning. Good morning. How's it going? Doing well. Nice Very to well, meet thank you. you, yeah. So, this, so you do this like yoga five days a week? I do. I teach Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 9.45 during the weekdays, 10.45 or 10.30 on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And I also have Zoom classes six days a week. Awesome. And it sounds like a Texan accent. Is that right? It is. Yeah. West <laughs> Texas. Yes. So what, is it worth relocating to Qashqai? I found it to be. I moved here in 2017 and really love the pace of life and the proximity to <laughs> Lisbon. I rode my bicycle on Friday to Ediceta, which is a two hour, 20 minute ride. About 40 kilometers. No, I have another bike, but I have ridden this one several times. Awesome. And so yeah. it's, a, it's a quick ride, and then I can be back on Sunday to teach. Excellent. Then it sounds like an amazing lifestyle. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah I love it here. Cool. Well, enjoy the, 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 the class. Thanks yeah, so much. Thank I really you very appreciate much. letting me film. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Thanks. Fernando, how's it going? Oh, how's it going? <laughs> right. Nice to meet you, man. Um, so listen, so you, you run SAP Alma, you're an instructor. Yeah, I am. And what do you, you said you do um, SAP in the summer? Yeah, in the summer we do the SAP uh, to a lot of people come here, but in the winter, as it doesn't have like a lot of movement in here, we also do the beach tennis so people can be enjoying the beach uh, all, the, all the year. Awesome, thanks so much. So how much is it? Uh, it's five euros to rent. Um, it's five euros to rent a camp, uh -huh. and you don't have like you know, any records. We can rent it for two and a half, two. Okay. And the balls we give it for free. You can stay the entire day playing if you want. And if you want to book online, can you book online? No, in a book online, no. But you can send a text or a number. And okay. Then you can rent it. Brilliant. Thanks, man. Okay. You're welcome. Did you say that was made of cigarettes? Yeah, this board is made of cigarettes, and this one is made of masks. Classics. That's recycled. Yeah, it's huh? publicity. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So I just popped into the douche bar while Alison does her uh, does her yoga, and um, just got myself a little bottle of water, two euros. So there's the cost of living in Kishkaj. So hi, Alison. Hi. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How was your yoga? Uh, it was really good. I hard. <laughs> <laughs> it looked but it was hard. beautiful. It was really nice. Okay, so we're right here at this amazing coffee shop. But it's closed. It's closed. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Um, this is the Lighthouse Coffee Shop, right? Have you been, yeah, you been here before? I have. They have an amazing oatmeal latte. Um, and it's a, a radio station as well, which is really cool. Um, some really great food. And yeah, it's just a cool spot. And there's a beautiful place to sit outside right next to the lighthouse. It's really nice. It's too bad it's closed. Okay, so we're just heading down to the marina to go and find a spot called Cafeina, which is second best. 
But look, can you see this behind me? So you're the local expert, what's going on here? Yeah, so there's a ton of restaurants, bars, shops down here. There's a bike shop over there if you want to buy a bike or get one repaired. Uh, there's a ton of restaurants, seafood, brunch, I mean, Italian, you name it. Cascais is a great place to land if you're coming from outside of Portugal because it's very expat friendly. There's tons of other foreigners here, big expat community. I mean, mostly everyone that we come across speaks English. Um, I would say though that it is harder to integrate into the Portuguese community, but it's really easy to integrate into the expat community. Um, I walk around all the time and I constantly see people I know, which makes it feel very much like a small town, and I really like that. Um, actually, we had made quite a few friends online before we got here, um, really relating to where our kids were going to school. So through some Facebook groups, we met up with, or met virtually some moms who were having their kids start at the same school that our kids were starting. They happen to be girls and they happen to be starting in the first grade as well, same as my daughter's. So um, we became online friends and then as soon as we got to Kishkai's, I had everyone over for dinner and really solidified the friendship with some food and a little bit of social setting, some drinks, and um, I think that really helped us uh, to have a very soft landing place and a, a support group that was here right from the beginning. It's really important. So, Alison, where are we at? We are driving along the coast, going north from Kishkais towards Sintra. And to our left over here is Gimshu Beach, Praia de Gimshu. And it's big wave beach, very windy, great for surfing, kite surfing, any kind of windy sports, um, but it's really beautiful. Come with me, we're going to Monja Dom Quijote. For lunch. For lunch and beautiful views. I cannot, Alison. Tell me something about Kishkai that, that nobody else would know. Well, no, not that nobody else would know. That is kind of important information, I think, for people relocating to, to Kishkai. Is it, are there any sort of hidden problems, issues and stuff? Because I know you're in the relocation business as well. Right? You know a lot about this stuff. Yeah, um, it, it is quite expensive. I think a lot of people who um, are moving to Portugal assume that all of Portugal is cheap. Um, mm -hmm. or they're, ex they're expecting Portugal to be cheap, but um, Cascais is really sort of like the, the posh little seaside village outside of Lisbon and... Porsches, really Lamborghinis, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, lots of those riding around. Um, a lot of international and private schools to meet the demands of, you know, the, the number of international families who are moving here as well and real estate here is is quite expensive um we were able to find a really nice house that is owned by a portuguese woman and did not have sort of the expat pricing that you see around a lot so you reckon there's two two markets like one for the expats and one for the locals i don't think it's explicitly like that i do think that there are enough people moving here who are willing to pay the higher prices mm -hmm. similarly in lisbon um that because i was just speaking to a guy yesterday and he was saying this place is so overpriced it's crazy mm -hmm. but i think if you look at supply and demand i mean if, if the properties are selling well then that's econ economics isn't it it is it is it, i think the problem comes up whenever people are willing to pay overpriced um prices that are too high because they can and then as a result prices go up all around as well so that's I think the bigger struggle with so many people coming in who have the means to pay for uh, nice things and then the people who maybe don't are being priced out of, of certain areas and Kashkais is definitely one of those areas that you really have to be careful um, we we got a really nice deal from a, a beautiful family who's lived in Kashkai's forever and is a retired teacher is our landlord she lives right above us and she's very sweet uh, but there's a lot of landlords that you know aren't quite so 
trustworthy or nice or willing to, you know, be friendly, I guess. Yeah, that is an important caveat, I think. Mm -hmm. Mary. Same vodka. Same vodka. <laughs> Obrigado. Enjoy. <laughs> so you having, what are you having? You having a Caesar salad? Yeah, Caesar salad with chicken. Mm. And I got the veggies. Isn't the view just so beautiful? And they have the best powder keju. So Lovely. nice. Good spot. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> So we're heading back down to Qashqaij and we have organized a car to take us on a little tour around just to drive through the streets. But apparently it's quite a special car, so we'll have to see what we're going to get. Okay, so we just arrived at the at Tim's Garage, which is a cool spot, and it's a Ford Mustang, which is really cool. Check this. How's it going, Manny? Good in you, Nick. So Manny, what's your position at um, BJ? BJ, I'm uh, Operations and Development Manager. You said you were the driver. I'm a driver today for you as well. <laughs> okay, so, so let me explain. So Manny works for BGA, um, the Brave Generation Academy, and Tim's Garage is based, sorry, BGA is based out of Tim's Garage. And this is Tim's Garage, all these, it's very confusing, man. Isn't it's it? Hey? All great things happen in garages, eh? All great things happen in yeah, garages, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. So this is like Tim's den, eh? This is like yeah. his, okay. Yeah, give you a uh, Nice cars. And in his den, he's got this amazing Mustang. So we're going to just take it out for a quick drive and show you the a little bit more of Qashqai's. So Manny, we're, we're, we're in this Mustang, which sounds amazing, man. Yep, it's a V8 1965 Ford Mustang. It's, a, it's known as the GT350. It's fantastic. Lovely. Sounds like a real gas guzzler. Okay, well, this is definitely the first time I've ever done this before. Cruising through the streets of Qashqai is an American classic. It's a, it's a big thing in the U.S. to try and get fresh fruit and veg. Is it a big thing in the U.S.? Uh, especially organic, yes. And if you're going to Whole Foods or anywhere else, I mean, you're spending an arm and a leg just trying to get, you know, the things that you're needing for your healthy lifestyle. Uh, in Portugal, there's plenty of organic farmers and you can get a farm box, things like that. But the local grocery stores, especially the big box grocery stores, don't always have a huge selection of organic produce and, and products. Um, so this is my favorite little bio shop here in Qashqai. It's called Bio Shop Qashqai and it's owned by Joao. He's very sweet. So let's go see if he's inside and I need some sugar. Oh yeah, the Mercado yeah, twice Mercado a week. Wednesday. The Mercado twice a week, the Wednesdays and Saturdays. And on Saturdays they do have the, the organic farmers outside. Hey Miguel, how's it going? Hey, good in you. Nice to meet you, yeah. Is that actually like it? Likewise, <laughs> enjoy I'm enjoying it so far. I just want to say something, this guy's so cool. He doesn't know me from a bar or soap, right? He invites me around his house. They have a bri. I mean, this is lekker. <laughs> oh, it's the best way I know how to do it. Like, when you meet people, it's always good around a bra. Yeah, perfect, you're right. Yeah. So tell me about, like, where are you from? You just, you come in from Joburg? Yeah, yeah, I'm a Joburg boy, born and raised. Uh, decided yeah. to come through here, start up a little Burevors run, and yeah, it's, it's going well so far, so I'm very happy about that. I can say that I've tried his Burevors, and it's fantastic. Man. I brought some at home, because we bought some up here on the last trip. Took it down to the Algarve, and it was fantastic. We're going to eat some more tonight, so you're going to, hopefully you guys can understand what Burevos is, because if you don't know what Burevos is, stick around. 
It's got to be too sizzly. So, what are the tips? No sizzles. Uh, tips? Slow and slow. Never go too hot because you just burn the, the skin. Yeah. So it's always nice, low and slow. Oh man, look at this. That is amazing. Thanks, Miguel. Appreciate it. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> So I headed back north up the coast a little bit to Kashkaj, and as I was driving along on the Uber, I reflected on, is it worth it to live in Kashkaj? As I often say, it depends on your circumstances. It's an amazing place to live, right on the water, with so many fun things to do, a vibrant entrepreneurial lifestyle, with an exciting expat and Portuguese community well integrated into a wonderful beachside area. If you can afford it, I'd do it. However, my personal opinion is that I like a little more nature in my life and a little more peace and a little more quiet. But it's not my decision, it's yours. One more thing. So guys, I know that like, we made a video here about how, um, how foreigners like you guys can integrate into the Kashkaj community. But there's a two-way street. You gotta try and you know, give back to the community as well. And I found Susie here, who's amazing. She's like found this incredibly underfunded charity here in Kashkaj. And I'd just love you to tell me a little bit about it, Susie, please. Okay, so uh, the, the charity is called uh, Casa de Super Mei Maria de Nazaré. Wow, I can't even say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually in the Kashkash area. Okay. And um, it's a wonderful, it's, it's uh, basically for nursery from zero to four years old. There's about seven, 70 families. 70 that, families. That's so have been helped. Can I just jump in here? Sorry, these 70 families, Susie was telling me about them. They're, they're, they're really, they're really struggling to exist, and um, they've all got young kids, and the money goes to like one nappy a day. You know, when I had a kid, we had three or four nappies a day at least. So it's really hard for these people. In a good day. In a good day, yeah. yeah. And, and this, this money really helps. They get funding from the camera? Yes, but a very small amount. Okay. So basically what they use uh, for a few families, that doesn't even cover for the whole year is what they get. So they basically, um, they survive on donations, personal mm. donations, People bring in food, baby food, milk, uh, diapers, nappies. So. so what we're asking you today is just to get, click the link in the bottom and just try and help Kashkash. <laughs> <laughs> and try and help the community in Kashkash because we all benefit from it. So thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.